today I wanted to switch out this little set that has been sent to me by Jackson's Art who have contacted me and asked if I would be interested to try these new watercolors out. They are the Aquarius by Roman Sismal and they're Polish and it says here extra fine watercolors. This particular set that was sent to me is not available to buy um, on their website um, because this was specifically designed for the 22nd ECWS watercolor exhibition and symposium in Estonia. So that was running last summer uh, in, in August and so this was little set that was created for it and it's housing five colors lemon yellow PY61, Asa red PR144, French ultramarine PB29, Aquarius green PY150, PBR25 and PB29, so a three pigment color, this one. Everything else is a single pigment. And hematite, which is violet shade, PR102. Um, I will link other sets that are available on Jackson's. There is a starter set, which also has five um, colors. These are full pans. And there are also, if I'm not mistaken, either 12 or 24 um, palettes, two different palettes by Polish artists, which uh, have been picked um, those colors by those two Polish ar um, um, artists. Jackson's Art also sent me three separate colors here, which is the full pans that you can buy separately, um, because I wanted to try out some of the granulating colors by this brand. And the colors that were recommended was um, Cobalt Turquoise. This one is hard to pronounce, um, Prisibisis Grey. So this is a surname of the artist, so I wouldn't be able to pronounce that and then mineral violet. So these are the three colors that are granulating and what I can see here, these two seem to be separating into two other colors. So I'm using just one of my um, um, palettes here to keep these in. Okay, so I will swatch them out in my um, swatch book. So if you're familiar with my channel, or you've been watching for a while, you know that I have this swatch book that I swatch everything out uh, from ink pads to watercolors, crayons and all sorts of um, beautiful art products. I will use Jackson's um, 10 Zero Quill brush and to begin with I'll just open up all of these colors. So when you buy these sets, the half pans come like that, they're not wrapped in paper as these are. Um, and then the palette is obviously um, out of paper, so quite budget. But the watercolors, from what I had, uh, meant to be quite good. So we've got here, there's no name, no sticker on the half pan, so a little bit low budget, but Let's just go with it. So the next one, so this was lemon yellow. This is a brown color, so that must be the hemolite, oh, hematite. Yeah, hematite. And then we have a blue. So yeah, lately there has been a lot of hype about this brand. Uh, because the watercolors um, are quite affordable and Jackson started um, carrying this brand as well now before they weren't available. Oh, this is interesting. It almost has like a green coating on it, so it's a red. Can you see that? Never seen this before. Hmm. Okay, so that's the Azo Red. Okay. Next thing. <clears throat> I really like when half pants are wrapped in a in a decent way. Kind of gives you that pleasure to unwrap it. So I'll just 
cut this one, see if I can save. And you also get information here at least, you know. But I guess you get the um, information on the packaging there, so anyway. Okay, so this is the cobalt. <clears throat> this one is quite interesting, mineral violet. Mineral violet, and then underneath I will use that gray that I can't pronounce. I'll bring it up close for you. There we go. Okay, so we've got a few colors ready here. Right, so let's start with this um, set here. So we're going to Watch out lemon yellow first of all. Um, large pans, I tend to use half pans, uh, but large ones means that you can use a bigger brush, so it's quite good for larger paintings. So from what I can see on the yellow, it's not super transparent, but I'm quite intrigued to see what this red is and why it had that sort of green coating. Oh, okay, so this doesn't look very transparent either. Very pigmented. So the, that was Azo, Azo Red, and then we have French Ultramarine. Next one is Aquarius Green. So I, I don't know whether you can see, but there is some sort of resistance here on the watercolor. I'll put here on the in the middle. So this probably would be quite granulating, I'll assume. So another thing I like to do is actually have a little play with these three colours because they are primary colours. So if we are going to, um, let's see, just create a little yellow here, red there, and blue here, and then we're going to start mixing them together and hopefully we'll get something interesting. I'm just going to use the side here, the mixing area. So we get an orange. And then if we mix this red with the blue, 
Let's see what kind of... Oh, no, that's quite muddy. I don't like that. Let's see if I add a bit of red to this. That's... Kind of not really a purple. Um, and then let's see what kind of green we can get with mixing yellow. And blue so we get a green so essentially what you can do now is just connect the colors and see what will happen so if I'm going to go back into yellow and connect it to the orange mix it on here you get middle colors like that so I'm going to go into the red mix it up onto the paper and again a bit of red onto this color here a little bit of that it's a lot of movement happening at the minute so the blue is very strong it has traveled all the way up there okay all right so here is the mixing of the colors okay so while these are still drying i'm just going to now check these three colors here so they were sent separately separately to the palette and i'm really really so can you see that there is some sort of coating or something in the watercolor that creates almost a resist in some cases? And oh, this is, I think this is supposed to be the um, Daniel Smith Moonglow dupe. I heard loads of it about, uh, about it. Uh, so... And then the cobalt. Hmm, this cobalt is not what I expected. It's a, from what I remember, similar to that muted Daniel Smith Sleeping Beauty watercolor that costs you uh, uh, a fortune. This is very, actually, I'm going to grab my Daniel Smith uh, swatch card or dot card just to see how similar it is to the Sleeping Beauty so we can see it together. Okay, so I pulled out my Daniel Smith um, 238 color chart and here are the turquoises. Now this is the Sleeping Beauty turquoise genuine and this is the Aquarius cobalt, what was it called? Let's see, cobalt turquoise. I have to say that it is actually much closer to this one, cobalt turquoise, almost the same color. It's got that muted quality to it. So very, very, very similar. Um, beautifully granulating. This is super beautiful. Now, there is something that I quite like in Daniel Smith in terms of the purples that does this beautiful separation. I can't see it at the minute. Um, I've got it in my palette, I'll show you, but, so that's kind of resembles it, but there is nothing like that in Daniel Smith, and this one is, uh, if I find the Moon Glow, now, on this swatch card, it's not a really great example, so it's here, it hasn't separated in, um, into what it usually separates, but basically, this is what it usually looks like. So I'll just show you in my palette. Here is the moon glow. You can see how very, very similar it is to this color. Sorry, I can't get it into the frame, but I will, once the colors um, have dried, I will show you a close up. Um, the other thing I wanted to show you is that purple. So the purple that I carry in my palette 
is uh, Daniel Smith Cobalt Blue Violet. Now that separates um, onto certain uh, in, on certain papers into beautiful pink as well, but you can see it's different. And this is a must-have color, stunning. Also, this is a must-have color. Very, very unique, uh, gorgeous. Absolutely loving these three, and from the from this palette, I love this color. Also, this one reminds me of Cascade Green a lot. Um, let me just grab a few examples for comparison. Okay, so they are now completely dry, apart from this little area here. And what I thought was quite interesting, a um, couple of colors are very, well, I'd say two colors are quite unique. And then, um, anyway, let's just start. So basically, we have, um, like I said before, so this is the lemon yellow, PY61, A is a red, PR144, French ultramarine, which tends to be quite granulating, and theirs is granulating. I also like their red at the full intensity. It's very, very bright, very saturated. Um, coming back to French Ultramarine PB29, single pigment as well. Now, this color, Aquarius Green, I thought it reminded me very much on the Daniel Smith Cascade Green, but I actually meant the Undersea Green. And uh, so here is Daniel Smith. Let's just show it like that. So here's the Daniel Smith version, which is this one undersea green and here is Aquarius green now um, it is literally identical like to the bit the lightest value of it the the sort of slight yellow undertone um, the blue coming through and the mass tone are exactly identical if you could you know, swatch them side by side you would not be able to tell them apart Daniel Smith had this color you know, for a lot longer. I don't know when they came up with this color, but it kind of, to me, is a replica of this color. Let's have a look at the pigments. So we've got PY 150, PBR 25, and PB 29. In the case of Daniel Smith, it is also PB 29. It is also PY 150, but instead of the PO 48, they have used PBR25. The color is identical, so I'm um, not sure how I feel about that. Generally, that's something I don't really like when companies do that, because if a color has been created by a brand and it's famous for that color, and you go ahead and recreate that color, at least don't call it like your own brand, you know? Um, but I don't know what the... Um, uh, facts of, of this is just pointing out how I feel about it. Then the fifth color of this set is the Hematite Violet Shade. Now this is a super beautiful color and I don't have anything like that in my collection of other brands and colors so I would highly recommend to check this color um, out. It's a single pigment PR102, which I was very surprised because generally to have a color of such beauty and granulation and slight pigment separation, I would assume there were a couple of colors used, but they're stating only one. So um, this is the color. It's super beautiful uh, for, I would even use it for skin tones uh, because it's, it's, um, lightest value it's a perfect skin tone with a bit of color it gets a bit of texture there so gorgeous gorgeous neutral color the other three which uh, were sent to me separately are these three colors and this is the mineral violet again nothing like it um, is in my watercolor collection by any brand the only one that i thought was similar ish is the Daniel Smith Cobalt Blue Violet, but it's more on the purple side, you can see here, uh, leaning towards blue, and this is towards red. Um, so it's gorgeous because it separates and kind of shines through, lets the red come through, although the red being uh, pigment violet 19 and pigment blue 29. So I'll give you a little close-up. 
you can see how beautiful this color is. At its um, darkest value as well as at the lightest, it's very interesting too. Finally, or not finally, but the next color is the Pru Prezi Bis Grey. Again, this color was um, named after the artist. He probably collaborated with them to create this color. This color is mentioned many times um, to be a dupe for the um, <clears throat> Daniel Smith Moon Glow. And here we have the two colors side by side. Again, pretty much identical. And let's look at them color so let's look at the pigments here so um, they used pb29 and daniel smith has pb29 as well they have used pr177 daniel smith has used pr177 finally they used pg26 and Daniel Smith used PG-18. So I guess they get away by using uh, one pigment very similar to the compound of the one that Daniel Smith uses in both cases in um, Undersea Green and Moon Glow to then name it as their own creation. But you can see side by side we have uh, two complete and utter dupes here uh, which were named their own names. So you can... Uh, make your own decision based on that. Um, these are definitely more affordable. So if you want, if you, if you're on a budget or you want to try that option, then it's obviously open to you. Um, and then cobalt turquoise is the final color, which is PB36. Now this is beautiful color indeed because it's a single pigment. It's got a granulation and it's a muted cobalt. Uh, turquoise. So generally a couple turquoises tend to be quite bright and um, you know we're talking about something like kind of like a bright uh, clean sort of color. This one is muted and it uh, makes it quite unique that way. So if I had to pick out colors that I find are unique and worth getting is these three colors here. So they're just really really stunning and um, you know, I wouldn't recommend something that has already been created by another brand and this is just a dupe of it because they weren't the, the pioneers of those colors. So the other colors, the primary three colors, gave us a good indication of how they mix and what kind of colors you can get. In the end, I could get a lovely purple here and everything from greens to oranges the colors mix beautifully they have this stunning granulation which can be carried through around the other colors so um yeah i have nothing negative to say about this um uh, brand or this particular set that i tried if you're new to watercolors i would um say it's a good um, good palette to start. There is, like I said, this is a unique one with these two colors, but there is one which is a starter palette and um, I will link it down below. So yeah, colors are bright, colors are pigmented and great for kind of like beginners or um, someone who who is looking to basically start watercolor, I would recommend those colors. And then the few unique ones, I need to have a look, a closer look and maybe order a few more of the single pans because if I can find in their range anything as interesting as these three, I would love, love to add them to my palette. I just think these are, you know, when a brand creates unique colors that haven't been created before, that's what makes me very excited and makes me appreciate their um, work and input. So yeah, these are my uh, standout colors that I would highly recommend. Okay, I hope you found this somewhat useful and just, you know, my opinion versus maybe others that you have heard so far. And um, hopefully that gave you kind of maybe a different insight into this. All right, thanks for watching and see you soon.